Hi, and welcome back to this next video around interview skills. Juji, my friend and colleague, is here again. So you've written a fantastic CV, a really good cover letter, and now you've been offered an interview. So Juji's going to talk us through some of the things that we can think about around an interview. So good morning, Juji. Morning, Colleen. Nice to see you again. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Are you okay? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm all right. Not too bad. So we've got to that point now where we've uh, we've we've written a CV, we've sent a cover letter. We did. And we've uh, <laughs> we found ourselves being offered an interview. Okay. Um so what are, what are the first things we we should consider um when we're being offered an interview? Well, obviously the employer we get in touch with us uh, whether it's a phone call, whether it is an email. Um, to offer us an interview and the first thing we should do is obviously acknowledge that email or that phone call and uh, basically make sure that we say we are available to attend. Um, this is an opportunity where um, a person with the site loss can ask uh, a couple of uh, more questions um, regarding the interview. So things like will I have to do a test, uh, will I have to uh, undertake anything else other than maybe a face-to-face -face interview with the, with the panel and depending the answers they're going to get obviously then they can go into disclosing their disability to a need-to-know basis just for the interview. So if the employer says yes we would like you to do a a test on the computer to see how fast you can type, then they need to say, yeah, that's absolutely fine, but this is the technology I might need, or this is, uh, I might need a little bit longer initially to set up myself in uh, front of your uh, computer. So this is the, the time to, to go into the initial discussion on having a disability and any reasonable adjustments you might require to undertake the interview. Okay, so what, in, in, as a rule, um what what kind of things do interview well how does an interview kind of feel what does it look like i mean you just mentioned the panel there mm -hmm. um so so what's a panel interview so uh, the panel interview is when you have more than one person in the room interviewing you. Uh, usually these days, I would say the average is, is, is three. Uh, but obviously, as long as it's, as it's more than one person, that's kind of, I would say, is a fair interview because um, each of those persons will score you regarding your answers. And um, usually the person with the highest score will get the, um, the job. Uh, the interview is usually... I mean, again, it can be varied, but usually I would say they last anything 45 minutes, from 45 minutes up to an hour, and they are based on competency-based questions. So competency-based questions are basically the question where they would like you to explain um, your um, skills, knowledge, and experience. And it's very, very rarely that you're going to have a question which is uh, close-ended. Usually they are open-ended questions. Okay, great. So you, you mentioned uh, that this might be a good opportunity to, to disclose the fact that you have a sight loss um, and maybe ask for some support. Uh, in your experience, it, does that generally get taken, these, these questions get taken well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, under the Equality Act 2010, the employers have to make the recruitment process uh, inclusive as well. And they're usually more than happy to make any adjustment that someone will require. One couple of things that um, could be difficult if somebody relies on the software uh, that obviously cost a thousand or even more pounds, then, you know, employers wouldn't necessarily have that. Um, um, at their disposal, but I usually ask my clients if they need such um, uh, tools to do an interview or a test. I will I usually ask them to maybe offer their own technology, so to say, look, I have it on my laptop, I'm happy to bring my laptop in. Obviously, I need a bit longer to maybe log into your network, and then and there you can email me the test, and that with my technology, I will be able to uh, fulfill that requirement of the interview. I, I, I think that actually. I've, I've always felt that when people disclose this really effectively and with confidence, it actually does sell you quite well as uh, an interview yeah. as well. Um, of course, of course. But you so, don't necessarily, sorry, you don't necessarily have to go into too much details at the, yeah. at the, at the beginning of the interview. Uh, I believe we're doing another interview on disclosure anyway, so we're going to we talk are, yeah. about it more, but just literally, here I am. I would like to do this job. I have a visual impairment. I know how I can overcome that initially. Can you mm -hmm. please let me have those, I don't know, those, things that I need to do the those interview? Mm -hmm. 
Because obviously, oh well, I'm saying obviously, but it, 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 it what about the support from Job Centre Plus? Obviously, they they encourage people to get work. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's just dep depending what kind of benefit you add on. So um, if you uh, on a job seekers, I know it's universal credit, but if if you on the stay having the job seekers um, side of it, where you have to go and sign on every two weeks and all of those, then obviously they might help you with uh, maybe a fair to get to your interview, or they might have a little budget to to buy you some interview clothing. But obviously, if you are on the ESA side of things, then uh, and you're not mandatory looking for a word, then you're probably not going to get any help from the job centre. So. You've been offered the interview. Um, you know what time it is, um, and what, but what, how else could you prepare for for the interview? What, what else? Other things you you consider? Various ways. So um, again, most people think the interview is only um, when you kind of arrive to the to the room and having your interview. I always say there is three parts to an interview. There is the beginning. There is the interview, or before the interview, the interview, and after the interview. So the pre-interview preparation would be number one you have to research the company you need to know exactly why do you want to work there that's definitely a question they're going to ask you why did you apply how do you see yourself um, settling in here what skills are you going to bring for us along those lines that question is going to be asked so it is your best interest to know everything about the company and obviously with the with the internet now that is you know, so much information, you need to know where they're based, who set them up, if it's a charity, what their aims, what their mission, how many people they support, anything. Uh, and, and you have to have the question kind of in your head, I have applied for this job and I'm sitting here because, and whatever is your reason, but just know why you are sitting there other than oh, I just want to have a job and it's kind of, you know, close enough to home and, you know, sounds that easy, that kind of answer isn't going to get you the, the, the job. Um, the, the other thing um, you need to think about is obviously, we said you're going to get there and you are at the interview, but obviously somebody who's visually impaired, it can be a difficulty just to get to an interview. So if you're going to be using public transport and you're not too sure where you're going, please go a day or two days before, yeah. find the building, know exactly where you need to go, get a friend to drop you off because what you can't afford is to be lost that day and be late yeah. for your interview regardless whether it's because of your visual impairment, because that would come across as somebody who isn't able to, I don't know, have a fulfilling, full um, um, life. Um, so that, that, that's very crucial. And obviously think about what you're going to wear, which is all, doesn't matter what job you're going for, please always dress smart and, and you know, dress for an interview, even if it's in the job in your local garden centre and you're going to be watering plants, you still need to dress for an interview. And then once you get into the, um, the building, the interview starts there. So what you don't know is who's been tasked to suss the candidate out. Yeah. So Speaking to the receptionist is very important when you're signing in, speaking to the security guard, extremely important. I have various stories and experiences about all of these that were quite um, interesting in terms of their outcomes. And um, <laughs> yeah, so the interview starts when you enter the building and is finishing when you leave the building and then you have your interview. And then the interview usually, so they're going to ask you questions that we just talked about a second ago that are competency based. And what mm -hmm. you need to um, kind of understand and, and kind of be prepared for the, the employer wants to know a lot about that particular question that they're going to ask you or the skills and knowledge and experience. And it's an acronym that I'm. I'm um, uh, using and I'm, 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 I'm advising my client about, and that is the STAR acronym, S-T-A-R. And that stands for Situation, Task, Action and Results. So if the employer asks you, have you ever had to, a silly question, have you ever had to deal with somebody who's been really angry, uh, an angry customer, let's say, and you say yes, that isn't going to get you the job. You need to say yes and then think about the STAR. When I was working X, Y, Z, I had the situation. My task was is to calm the customer down and whatever, whatever. My action was I offered them water, a seat, a lollipop, whatever you did. <laughs> and the result of that, because of my good 
um, skis that dealing with angry customer, the customer was happy and they left and they've been back and, you know, shopping with us ever since. So think about possible question and your answer should be based around the STAR acronym. If you don't do that, you're not going to get the job. And the next step is the internet is full of big questions. So if you're having a, an interview, just go and Google, you know, top 10 questions for whatever admin interviews or top 10 questions for whatever is the job that you're going for and have a look at the questions but the answers should be always based around the STAR acronym and then once that's kind of happening for 40-45 minutes then obviously part of the interview is that you have to have questions for the employer mm -hmm. so think about the questions you're going to ask uh, there is a zillion different questions you can ask the one thing I always say to people don't ask about can you go off sick please don't ask about holidays and please don't ask about anything that could make you look a little bit kind of difficult so and don't ask things that you can find out from the internet so asking the employer so actually what are you making here are you making candy floss or are you making lollipops you should really know that before yeah. you turn up. So anything that you can find out from the employer, please don't ask about, um, don't ask them as a question. The things you can ask is, you know, I don't know, how big is the team? Has anybody done this job before me? Will I have a handover? And um, things like, you know, would I have a probation period? Uh, how long is that for? What access would I have to a manager within my probation period? So I know I'm doing the job okay and I'm on the right track. Would I have regular reviews with them? Um, again, what's the expectation of the of you from this role the next three months, six months, and maybe in the year mm. time? What training you're providing? Is any of my training can result into a qualification? hundreds of questions you can ask regarding yeah. you and the employer and your kind of curiosity in terms of the questions that this is the questions I want to ask because I want to do well in this job and yeah. then the last question when you're going to let me know if I'm successful Always. and how would you let me know and then obviously body language and all of those things are extremely important which is again we could maybe do another topic on that because it's very difficult for visually impaired people to read those things but you know you leave the room handshake thank you so much for having me lovely to meet you or you know looking forward to hear from you and then you kind of uh, leave and then the last part of the interview is if you are not successful and only then you can ask for the feedback but from my opinion um I read, you know, quite a lot of feedbacks uh, from clients in terms of their interviews. And I, I haven't maybe a handful that has actually had any uh, valid point in it, something that I as an advisor could go and work uh, with the client on in terms of improving their skills. Usually, mm. it's, you know, you earn the best, somebody's more experienced, somebody's, I don't know, prettier, taller, whatever. Yeah. You can't necessarily um, learn from the feedback, but it's a polite thing to ask. Yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's all really good good advice. I like I yeah, I agree with you that it is from the moment that you enter that building to the moment you leave, the interview is, yes. is taking place. Um, because if you're sitting in reception constantly on your phone, it doesn't mean it doesn't look good. You're not really focused, all no. that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, what are your sort of main top tips, your takeaways for interviews? So, the beginning of the interview, before the interview, uh, the word three times: research, research, research. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely you feel you will feel very silly if you don't do your research. And it's something that it just has to be done, full stop. Uh, regarding the interview, uh, obviously, just be you. There's no point to try to be somebody else. They're going to, you know, you're not going to be able to hold that up for maybe an hour in front of three people when you are kind of stressed because interviews are usually a stressful environment. So just be you. Don't forget to smile. It doesn't matter if you can't see them smiling back at you. You, you do look different when you're smiling. <laughs> Uh, try to obviously um, uh, minimize any, you know, nervous ticking or flicking with your fingers and feet and all of that. And um, 
uh, don't forget the STAR acronym and use it and think about it. Think about the potential question. What? How can I explain that scenario? How can I answer to the question with the real scenario where I had mm. a situation, when I had a task, I actioned something and because of what I did, the result was whatever. It's, it's crucial to know about the STAR acronym because that's what how employers want to hear your response. And the, and the STAR acronym stands for? Situation, task, action, and a result. Brilliant. That's that's really really good advice. That's a top secret. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a top secret. <laughs> wow. Well, well, put it out there, make it less of a top secret. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Uh, well, Juju, that's been really interesting. Uh, really, really good advice as as, as always. So Thanks, thank you for uh, thank you for giving us uh, some really good strong information. You are welcome. Great. Great. Cheers. Then. See you later. Bye. Bye. That's brilliant. What well, some really good advice there. Really understandable, very simple things to follow. That STAR acronym is brilliant. So scenario, task, action, resolution. If you answer all your questions, bearing that in mind at any interview, it's going to stand you in good stead. If you want any more information, you can always speak to me though, so you can get me on the usual way through the advice and information service on 0300 30 30 111. The Working Age and Young People's Facebook group is there always, so if you haven't joined that yet, why not just give a click and have a join? Really good community on there. And these videos will be on our YouTube channel. There will be a playlist for employment and videos, so just click on those and have a look at them as you need them. So we'll see you on the next video.